Hi everybody, I'm Jennifer Wenlein, and guys, this isn't for you, I'm talking to RV wives. We've received a lot of emails. I've met and talked to a lot of you. You come up to me and ask me questions, things that you're just not quite sure about that I'm gonna to try to answer to try to make you more comfortable and relaxed and happy about this RVing experience. Concern number one is food preparation and cleaning up. And first thing I'm gonna say is I give you permission to eat out as often as you want, maybe every couple of days. It's fun to eat at new places. And for those of us who weren't born to work in the kitchen, we don't enjoy the work and all that's involved in the kitchen. And it's, it's just fun to get out and it's your vacation too. But when you do eat out, don't pick a chain restaurant. Look for a mom and pop restaurant somewhere in the area and eavesdrop on the local conversations. Try to meet some of the local people ask for spots, maybe other spots that you should eat while you're in the area or things that you should see while you're in the area. So don't just go to the places where you're comfortable with, try those new places. That's part of life on the road, experiencing the communities that you're in. Nothing is more social than eating and eating with the locals. But you can't eat out all the time, so make it fun. Prepare as much as you can ahead of time, think ahead, take food that you want with you, and so you don't want to have to be desperately scrambling for a spice or some ingredient that you didn't bring and that's a little bit harder to find. And what I like to do is plan on grilling out. You can get Mike involved, or Mike, get your husband, whoever you can find, <laughs> involved in uh, helping to cook. And you keep that smell outside. It doesn't smell up the interior of your RV. And it's always fun to cook out. So cook out as much as you can. Prepare ahead at home as much as you can. And remember your limited space, what dishes you're going to need, what pots and pans, measuring spoons, gotta have all that stuff. Now, cleanup time. Divide the work, the cooking, the cleanup. Whoever likes to cook, maybe your husband likes to cook more than you do, or whoever you're traveling with likes to cook more than you do. But divide the workload. I'm sure you've all figured that out at home. But make sure that one person isn't doing it all. And use paper plates, feel free to use those products that you throw away, but I know we don't like to make that landfill mess. Naturally, recycle as much as possible, but uh, give yourself the freedom to make it as easy as you can make it. And as much as possible, eat outside. Get a nice tablecloth cover, and you can even get for the benches a cover. Sometimes they're even padded. So hook the, that tablecloth on, hook the pad on the benches, and just wipe it down when you're done. Eat outside as much as you can. It keeps all the mess outside and not in your RV. Concern number two is sleeping. Just as I gave you permission to eat out, feel free to get a hotel room every two or three nights. La Quinta, there's different places that take pets, allow pets, and there's even an app. It's called Go Pet Friendly, and it lists all the hotels and restaurants that welcome pets. You just open it up, plug in your location, and it shows you what's nearby. This is a great tool for those of you who travel with pets. But the reason we have an RV is so that we can sleep in it, so let's talk about that. Now, we're in a Class B. Ours makes into twin beds or a king-size bed, so whichever you prefer. Usually in the winter, we make it into twin beds because that helps the heat come up from the floor. It just helps the place stay a little bit warmer. But in the summer, the rest of the year, we make it into a king. I like the sleeping space of a king. I like it made up as a big bed, but a lot of people love it as the twins. And then sometimes when they leave it as the twins, or even if they leave it made up all the time, the bed, they will get a big extra heavy pad and put on top of it if they're not gonna be breaking it down all the time. In our case, we bought the RV super bag. In fact, we bought twins. We've got two twins, and then we have a king size one. We love it. One side, you put it up, it's for winter. The other side, you switch it around, it's for summer, not quite so warm. It has sheets that Velcro in. You take the sheets out, wash them, put them back in. We love these things. In fact, we've just about worn them out in five years. They're expensive, but they're well worth it. That leads to the next question. Do you leave the bed made up as a bed or do you fold it up like a sofa? Personally, I make it into a sofa because I want the space to walk back and forth and because we have a 55 pound dog and I don't want my dog 
jumping and laying all over our bedding. He would just get it too dirty. But if I were traveling and not planning on stopping much during the day, I sure would like to leave it made up as a bed. So it's easy just to pull over and lay down and sleep. But 99% of the time, we make it into a sofa. The next concern is clothing. Usually we just take too much. We're so worried that we're not gonna have what we need that we just bring way too much. We use our wardrobe. We hang a lot of things on hangers, but we love our e-bags. We uh, got a set of three different colors for Mike and for me. We can get so much in those e-bags, I can't believe it. So I've got the e-bags, I've got the wardrobe, and you can find laundromats when you need to do laundry and when you need to wash your sheets. I usually wash my sheets twice a week. That's what I like. Other people maybe once a week, but I'm a twice a week person. And uh, the laundry, putting that's the hard part, the dirty clothes. Where are you going to put them? Because you can't take wet things and put them in a container where they're going to get moldy, nasty. They have to have air. So you have to figure out that spot that works best for you. Usually we have a mesh type bag, a bag that can breathe. And I might put a couple fabric softener sheets in there to for the smell, to keep the smell down. And uh, naturally, you don't put things in there wet. We have a line that we put in the bathroom, a little clothesline that we hook up, because you gotta dry it out. We can't store things that are wet, even for a day or two, that just gets nasty, you know that. So the clothing, we've gotta have that special place wherever you determine you're gonna put the special place for the clothes and make sure those clothes are dry. Do whatever you're gonna do for the smell of those clothes. And then I like a laundromat about every three, four days. Sometimes I'll go five. It depends on where we are. When it comes time to do the laundry, I don't know who does the laundry in your house. Mike doesn't do laundry. I don't think he's ever done laundry, to come to think of it. So whoever does the laundry in your house, it's nice to go to a local laundromat and just spread out, use the washer and dryer, get everything done in just a short period of time, fold it back up, put the sheets back in, and you are ready to go. We also look for KOAs. They all have laundromats. KOAs are clean. They're reliable. You can depend on a KOA. You know what you're going to get. They're close to the highway. Have those laundries, clean bathrooms. And I do laundry at the KOAs. Again, you get a lot done in a short period of time. The next area people ask about is showering. At KOAs, we found that the showers are normally clean. The bathrooms, the showers are spotless. That's the norm. Most places are clean. And if they're not clean, make sure you tell somebody who runs the park that you're disappointed in the cleanliness of the place. But most of the time, everything's clean. Take flip-flops, shoes. I'm sure you do that anyway, but I have even have one friend. She wears shoes when she's in a hotel room in the shower. She doesn't trust the cleanliness of the place. So... Make sure the showers are clean, and uh, you might even want to check on the bathrooms before you rent your, rent your spot if you're concerned about it. But uh, we don't shower that often in our RV. You can shower, and when you're in the middle of nowhere boondocking, that's when you'd use it, or I think just boondocking is when you'd use it, because most places they have a shower. Uh, if the showers were nasty, I would leave. I wouldn't stay if the bathrooms were dirty. It'd be a tough call to make me stay there. But when you shower in the RV, you pull that curtain all the way around. You use as little water as possible. Get yourself wet, soap sparingly, rinse off, and uh, then you're done with it. Dry everything off and move on. And a lot of them have a little rinse off shower outside. If you're in your bathing suit and you want to rinse off a little bit, you can do that outside. I've even seen people who take a little tent and they shower in the tent. They have a few buckets of water and they shower and rinse off in their little tent besides their RV when they're in the middle of nowhere. And we all know that you don't take a bar of soap and go down to the creek or the lake and shower in the lake. I think we've all got that firmly established in us. So um, staying clean, you can do it. The next area, a lot of women talk to me that they're just uncomfortable at the idea of driving an RV. I got to say, the idea of driving a Class A is a little scary to me, and I told Mike, I said, you get a Class B, I will drive it a Class A, no way, you are the driver. But I guess I'd have to apply what I'm going to say to you to me if we had a Class A, do it. 
drive someplace where you're comfortable find a back road somewhere and get comfortable driving that rv number one i get bored just sitting there i uh, you know i have a little trouble reading for a long period of time I, I just get restless i i like the feeling of control you get behind that wheel and you start racking up those miles and i even get a little crazy about not wanting anybody to pass me and then have to pass me again so I do enjoy driving, and I have driven through big cities. Usually, Mike does that, but get comfortable driving. I know once I drove almost the whole 900 miles home from our kids. Mike was ill, and I drove, and everything, the driving conditions were good, I'm very happy to say. I have had, I have experienced a flat tire while I was driving. I've experienced a truck passing another truck, which left me no place. To go and uh, survive that so uh, oh you know just things happen when you're driving and don't worry about it it'll it'll all be okay famous last words right but don't be afraid to drive drive get used to it you want to drive while we're talking about driving let's talk about an area that's sensitive in our family somebody told us about this a long time ago the 330 rule quit at 3.30 in the afternoon so that you can get a good campsite, enjoy that campsite, settle in before it's dark. It's so hard to find everything you need to hook up to or do everything in the dark, make sure the ground's level, all that sort of thing. It's just easier to park in daylight. So stop at 3.30 or drive no more than 330 miles. That's really long enough to be sitting there. It's not good for us to sit there forever and ever. So don't let whoever you're with get real got to get there got to get there relax enjoy it and don't wear yourself out don't get leg cramps and just take care of your body stop enjoy the last area space in an rv particularly a class b where you, there isn't a lot of space we all need space we all need time without bumping into somebody we just need to be by ourselves for a little bit so Make sure that you go for a walk or the other person goes for a walk. Make sure that you carve out some do not disturb time that's just for you. That somebody clearing their throat or they have some kind of little irritating habit that you don't go, ah, I'm going crazy. Make sure that you separate for a while and then you come back and it's just great to see each other again. So make time to be by yourself and do whatever you need to do. In our class B, we have our offices, as I like to call them. Mike, we have a third chair, and Mike will sit there. That's his desk, his office space. And I take the whole bench in the back, usually with Bo jumping up and sitting beside me. But Bo does feel free to come and go as he pleases, but usually he pleases to sit on the bench right next to me. And I can pull out a little shelf, and that's my space to put whatever I'm working on, whatever I'm doing. So we each have our own offices, as I like to say. You'll figure this out in whatever you're RVing and you'll figure out where everybody goes for their space when they want to be alone and when to come back together and watch something or read a book together or whatever you want to do, share something on the internet. You'll work out all these little details, but it's okay to want and to have and to need your space. It's just okay to eat out. It's okay to rent a room. It's okay to do all these different things. Before we end this video, let me go back to something that I said earlier about getting a room, renting a room. When we bought ours, it's such a major investment and you love it, it's new, it's shiny and you like being in it, but every now and then you just want more space. And somebody said to me that every third night they rented a room and it was like giving me permission. I just thought, well, we have to stay in this. I like it, but you know, once in a while you want a little bit of elbow room. And it was freeing to me. So if that helps you, if that gives you this opportunity to say, I, if you're feeling cramped and boxed in, I can rent a room. I don't like most rooms. I prefer our RV. I know it's clean. I, I prefer the RV to renting a room. You don't know what you're going to get a lot of places that you go. Not everything is, most things aren't as clean as what I think my RV is. But I wanted to give you for permission to do whatever you want to do. Don't feel like you have to stay in something especially until you get comfortable and you bond with it and you build a relationship with your RV. And I just hope that this has been helpful to you and I look forward to seeing you again. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any time. 
Before you go, please subscribe to our RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube. I'm Jennifer Wenlin. Thanks for watching.